A twofold enigma on the moon's secret side. An unexpected double crater photographed on the moon adds to the mystery that began when Bill Gray, a U.S. astronomer and astronomy software developer, predicted in early 2022 that a rocket remnant would hit the far side of the moon within a few months. This was the start of an affair characterized by a mystery within a mystery. Follow me if you want to learn more. The object WE0913A, for the time being, was originally photographed by the Catalina Sky Survey, a network of telescopes near Tucson dedicated to wide-field searches for comets, asteroids, and near-Earth objects whose orbits could possibly overlap Earth's. WE0913A, on the other hand, was orbiting the Earth rather than the Sun. This is unusual for an asteroid. Going back in time, the object was discovered to have passed close to the moon just two days after SpaceX launched its Deep Space Climate Observatory mission on a Falcon 9 rocket, so Gray correctly assumed it was the second stage of Elon Musk's SpaceX's Falcon X rocket launched in 2015. Later observations and analysis convinced him that the object was the third stage of a Long March 3C rocket, which had launched China's Chang'e 5T1 mission to the moon on October 23, 2014, carrying a probe that was supposed to test the technology needed for the Chang'e 5 mission, which was supposed to land on the moon, collect lunar soil samples, and return to Earth in 2020. The probe arrived at our satellite on October 27th, transited roughly 12,000 kilometers from its surface, and then returned to Earth, landing in Inner Mongolia as intended, while the rocket's third stage was abandoned in a dangerously unstable orbit. Gray calculated that the wreckage of the third stage would impact the far side of the moon on March 4th, 2022, based on thorough investigation. The debris was also identified by some University of Arizona students who were able to examine the image of the object and conduct a spectral analysis of the outer paint, which turned out to be identical to that of similar Chinese boosters, but completely different from that of a Falcon 9. Furthermore, the Chang'e 5T1 had been in communication with a small amateur CubeSat satellite for the first 19 days of its flight, and the trajectory data given by that satellite completely matched the trajectory computed by Gray. So far, so good, until the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs issued an official statement on February 21, 2022, declaring that the debris from the rocket destined to hit the moon next March does not come from the Chang'e 5T1 mission in 2014. According to our tracking, the upper stage of the Chang'e 5 mission rocket re-entered the Earth's atmosphere in 2015 and fully burned up. What exactly was the mystery? Gray was assured of his calculations, and hence the Chinese government was deceiving him. But why is this so? To maintain China's good faith, one could speculate on a probable misunderstanding on the mission indicated in the denial. The Chang'e 5 mission, rather than the Chang'e 5T1 mission, was referred to in both the Chinese and English transcriptions, as well as the Chinese language video of the news conference. Chang'e 5T1 was a test mission that was planned to be followed by Chang'e 5, which would have attempted to return lunar samples to Earth. Chang'e 5 was launched in November 2020, and the top stage of that mission disintegrated after re-entering the Pacific Ocean a week later. Was there an unintentional misunderstanding between the two missions' names on the part of the Chinese? Even today, this is exceedingly dubious, but the fact remains that the Chinese authorities have consistently refused to admit their errors, even in the face of undeniable data. And it's difficult to understand why, given that the moon has been the target of many other probes and instruments launched from Earth, sometimes to assess lunar seismic features, and in other cases as a result of technical issues and failed controlled lunar landings. The first man-made object to collide with the moon happened on September 13, 1959, when the Soviet Union launched the Luna 2 mission toward our natural satellite, which crashed west of the Sea of Tranquility. Thirty minutes later, the third stage of the rocket carrying the tiny probe likewise collided with the moon. 
In the years since, the Saturn V upper stage boosters of the Apollo 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 flights have all crashed on the moon to examine the impact vibrations. Sometimes the missions purposefully launched boosters to the moon for scientific purposes. Many additional unintended collisions are likely to have occurred in the past, but we were unaware of them since boosters that leave Earth for low-Earth orbit missions frequently remain in space rather than re-entering the atmosphere. According to a study conducted by Arizona State University, at least 47 American rockets have crashed on the moon. However, at least 50 objects were left in low Earth orbit during the 1960s, 1970s, and 1980s. Many of them were nowhere to be found, and at least some of them most certainly hit the moon by mistake while we were unaware. Bill Gray, on the other hand, knew his business. He even ventured to the place of impact, the far side of the moon, near the massive Hertzsprung crater, and calculated that the wreckage of the Chinese rocket would hit the lunar surface at a speed of around 3 kilometers per second, or 11,000 kilometers per hour. Data was also used by Mark Robinson, an Arizona State University professor and the principal investigator of the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter Camera, to explain how the four tons of metal would have carved a crater 20 meters wide at that speed, which was widely observed by some of the probes in lunar orbit at the time, including NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter and the Indian Space Agency's Chandrayaan-2. Thus came the fateful day of March 4th, yet no one could ever confirm or deny whether or not the impact had occurred. Because the impact was projected to occur on the opposite side of the moon, spectators on Earth had no opportunity of seeing it, and the lunar orbiting probes were not in a favorable position for filming on that day. But, because our spacecraft was in close conjunction with the sun that day, the same thing would have happened if the impact had occurred on the near side. Some of you may be wondering how anyone can be certain that the impact occurred. You couldn't, and that was the end of it. Only the most recent first-hand views of the wreckage, made some four weeks ago, provided near assurance that the third stage of Long March 3C had disintegrated in the regolith of the lunar landscape. Gray's predictions were validated by observations. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter was able to find and photograph the crash site for the first time on May 22nd, providing official confirmation of what had occurred. And this was the biggest surprise and mystery of the entire event. Not one, but two new impact craters were clearly visible right on the border of Hertzsprung Crater, almost exactly where Gray's estimates had placed the event. The two craters overlap, one 16 meters wide and the other 18 meters wide, generating a 28 meter diameter crater. A tennis court, by comparison, is around 24 meters long. A single object striking the moon should leave a single crater. Many double craters have been discovered, most likely caused by binary asteroids, two rocks orbiting each other that strike almost simultaneously, or by a single object that splits in two right before impact. However, the latter occurs only upon re-entry into the atmosphere. And that is most emphatically not the situation here. So, what motivated this thing to act in this manner? That remains a mystery. A booster is essentially a long tube with extremely powerful rocket engines and nozzles at one end and fuel tanks running the length of it. Those tanks are quite light once the fuel has been depleted. The impact of the engines provides the majority of the force capable of digging a crater, and the rest of the booster can only affect the form of the crater by stretching it. The booster may have come in at a very low angle of incidence, causing a double jump on the ground like rocks tossed in water, but Gray's calculations show that the angle of contact was very close to vertical, therefore this cannot be the explanation. To the best of our knowledge, no prior lunar impact of a rocket body has ever resulted in two craters, and this remarkable anomaly shows that whatever impacted the moon had an unusual structure, with two big, massive protrusions at each end. Tidal forces are another idea. When an object approaches a big body, such as the moon, it may be warped and then broken when it approaches the so-called Roche limit. What exactly is the Roche limit? 
It is the shortest distance from the center of a celestial body below which a second smaller body in free fall will be broken up by tidal forces, i.e. by the distortion caused by the difference in gravitational force acting on the part of the smaller body closest to the larger body versus the part farthest away. However, this may apply to very massive things, not a booster about 12 meters long. In summary, the enigma persists, and it is at this point that doubt begins to enter into the minds of individuals who are unable to get their heads around all of these anomalies. Could there be a propensity on the side of government and even private space agencies to conceal the truth about what is launched into space? The dilemma arises as an increasing number of analysts and professionals fear that space will become the next battlefield. Russia and China, for example, have recently undertaken anti-satellite missile tests, while the United States has long held similar weapons. Despite the fact that the Outer Space Treaty has required nations to use space only for peaceful reasons since 1965, most technologically capable countries are now developing a strongly strategic view of space resources. Even if no formal statement of the presence of military systems aboard satellites exists, but should we believe it? Are we to assume that dubious experiments aren't being conducted in orbit with satellites and probes launched in complete secrecy? Even if we don't wish to consider the worst case scenario, a conflict, all of these missions would be entirely classified, preventing any potential of cataloging the leftovers left in high orbits, such as the space between the Earth and the Moon. There is an internationally valid registry of launched objects for everything orbiting the Earth, low orbit or geostationary orbit, but nothing has been done to address the need to begin cataloging dozens of pieces of space junk, such as spent rocket bodies, defunct satellites, and debris from missions to cislunar space. Space debris has been widely scattered around the moon since the 1960s, beginning with the Apollo mission and then with the advent of the space competition between the United States and the Soviet Union. The position or orbit of the great majority of lunar debris, its presence, or what stays in orbit around the moon or in cislunar space are unknown to scientists. These objects are expected to remain in place for at least decades. If action is not taken immediately, the current debris, as well as what will be created and launched in the coming years, will become an increasing problem, potentially posing a risk to humans and spacecraft in the lunar environment. The problem is twofold, just like the crater left by that single booster, establishing some form of absolute control over everything that is launched into space, and preventing space, understood as a kind of new wild west, from becoming a new race, not for gold, but for armaments.